Hi! Today we're going to work on a container pond. This is a really easy weekend project and if some of you live in an urban setting like I do um, and you may say, oh, a pond is too much work and or I don't have enough space for it, I say, bah humbug to you because you can easily, if it contains, if it contains water, you can easily have a pond. So, what you start with, you find a container and you make sure it's clean. If it's a container that's been sitting out uh, through the winter, um, there's been standing water maybe from a couple rainfalls because um, you've had it outside, you haven't had a chance to actually do anything with it, um, be sure to dump all that out because standing water is really bad for parasites, mosquito larvae, and things of that nature. Uh, all the debris can start bacteria growing uh, too soon. So make sure you got it all cleaned out. Um, and so step one is the base. You got to really build up your base. Um, so you can start putting in plants at different levels. You can either start building from the bottom up, but it gets really heavy if you're talking about a 40 gallon container. So last year what we ended up doing is we rigged a, um, a pot holder, a pot stand, got rid of the plastic liner, turned it upside down, and had the right radius as where it can sit up about midway up so we don't have to build right from the bottom. So as you can see here, this is a, that um, pot stand that I was talking about. So you can see here, this is a good base to start with. Now we're going to start putting in our water. So how does one figure out how many gallons? Well, it's, it's a math problem. For instance, for a container this size, what you do is you take the diameter times the lower diameter times the depth, and then you multiply it by 5.9, okay? And I'm talking feet, all right? So measure in feet what your diameter is, times your other diameter, times your depth, and times it by 5.9, and that'll tell you how many gallons you have roughly. Now based on that, you figure out your chlorine remover, okay? It'll tell you how much you need to put in per gallon. And once you fill up your water, you put in your dechlorinator and you put in a pond balancer. Now there's lots of pond balancers out there. Um, there's liquid pond balancers and there's dried pond balancers. This is a dry pond balancer. This is by Pond Care. It's Ponzyme with barley. Dryer balancers have a longer shelf life and liquid balancers only have a one year shelf life. Why is there a shelf life? Because there's actually natural bacteria in here. If it's shelf stable, they'll live longer. Why is there bacteria in here? Because these bacteria are going to create a nice ecosystem and they're going to eat up all the parasites and the bugs and a lot of the debris that any pond is gonna have that lands at the bottom of this. Okay, so we got our water and now it's time to dechlorinate. Now this here says one cap full per 20, so I'm gonna put two capfuls for 40. If you don't wanna use chemicals to dechlorinate, another thing you can do is actually just let your water sit. If you let your water sit for a day, it pretty much dissipates most of the chlorine. And then it's time for Ponzyme, or whatever balancer that you're going to be using. What this is going to do is it's going to settle along the bottom. See, it's already going down. And the microbes are going to get activated and they're going to create a little happy little ecosystem down there. And they're going to eat up all leaves, debris. You've got to love urban settings. Can you hear the police and the fire engines and the honking? <laughs> all the more reason why you need to have a water feature in your yard. <laughs> for relaxation and rest when living in the city. Anyway. You have lots and lots of choices in how to move this water. You can just get a pump that sits along the bottom and just quietly moves it. You can get bubblers, you can get sprayers. There's gorgeous um, bamboo fountains and lots and lots of fountains. You can even create a fountain out of rock if you'd like. Um, we're gonna keep things simple. For the past few years, I've used um, a bamboo fountain, but that has, um, made its way to the trash because it's been used so many times. So um, last year we did something a little simpler. We've got a pump, pump this big, which is good and solid for like a 40-gallon four, a uh, container pond, but it just kind of sprays um, and trickles into the water. Um, so that's what we're going to be using today. Yeah, 
as we go. So, next thing, thank you, Carla, are the plants. From. Now, my rule of thumb is to have a variety of heights and textures within the pot. For instance, this year, Carla and I chose some giant horsetail, nice strong element, very linear to go towards the back. Something very strong and um, just a main featured element kind of within your um, arrangement is, is really a nice thing to do. And then you can have some fluffy filler. This is um, an arrowhead. Let me check here. It's an arrowhead. Oh no, it was not. It's something really cool actually that Carla chose. If you can look here, it's a lizard's tail, so it's going to flower like that. And this needs to be a little bit more shallow. For some reason, I thought that was an arrowhead. I apologize. Then, it's nice to have a trailer. I like to have something that's going to kind of go down the side of the pot um, as it grows in the season. This is a bog plant, also called a burgundy creeping jenny. It's going to have some little yellow flowers um, as it trails down the pot. And then it's also really nice if you've got room to have some sort of floating element. Now, in the past I've done water lilies, which are really, really pretty. Um, but this year I decided to do something different, and this is a water hyacinth. Now you need to keep an eye on these because these propagate really fast, so they could easily take over your pot really quickly. But they saving this really pretty rock to put here. And now we got our plants in. Okay, so now it's time to do the finishing touches. First and foremost, if you've got some damage from uh, the trip from the garden center, Go ahead and clip off anything that's less than happy. So the other thing that I purchased, and I'm not sure how many of these I'm gonna need, that is some really pretty river rocks as little accents here and there. Um, they're also really good at holding some of these into place. For instance, this trailer is sitting up top and to let it kind of get put some weight. I'm going to put some of those in there. They're really, really pretty. And actually the colors match the plant. It's really important to just keep an eye on these guys and make sure everything's going okay. If things are in balance, you shouldn't have algae growing along the top. You should have nice, good green growth, flowers, um, hyacinths should be propagating. Everything should be all hunky-dory. And that's if you keep up with your pond balance. Read your instructions and just stay up on your upkeep. Now, if by chance um, you do start getting some algae and you're noticing that your water feature is getting um, slower and there's some slime happening, there's some really great algae remover. If you excuse me, let me go grab it. There's different kinds. This one is for fountains and it clears things up. If you have to have your water replaced by tap water again, just make sure to dechlorinate as you need. So if you've got a good like couple gallons that you're topping off here and there, make sure to add a little bit of dechlorination because chlorine is really, really bad for your plants. But overall, everything should be all happy and you should be able to enjoy your pond all throughout the summer. So. For other gardening tips or advice or to chat with me, just go to www.urbandomesticdiva.com. I'm looking forward to your uh, emails and comments. Ciao.